think it's done it. I think it's done it. Has it done it? Oh man, that's awesome. It looks like I've got a solution. So if I move my cursor around, these guys should follow me. Oh man, this is awesome. I think it actually worked. 43 generations. They're actually tracking me. Hello guys, Ash47 here and welcome to another episode of AI with Ash47. Today's episode, we're going to be learning all about target tracking. And once again, we're going to be using ninjas. And once again, this demo is completely available on my GitHub. Let's use the link in the video description. You can go there and play with it right now. Now, how many ninjas do we want to play with? Recommended amount is probably around 250, but based on your computer, you can go more or less. We're going to play around with about a thousand in today's episode. Let's go ahead and begin the simulation. Now, the first one is going to take some time to generate. Here we go. It's just generating. And there we go. Okay. After this, it should be pretty fine now. Awesome. So the goal of these ninjas here is actually to track the cursor. So this yellow thing here, my cursor, they're trying to basically land on that position. Now the way that they do that is they control their horizontal and their vertical gravity. So if we have a look at the inputs up here, we have four inputs. Inputs in order of left to right here. The first one is the X difference to the actual cursor. So for example, if it has a negative number, that means the cursor is to the left. If it has a positive number, it means the cursor is to the right. The next number is the same but with the vertical position. So a negative number means the cursor is above them, a positive number means the cursor is below them. Now the next ones we have are the velocity. So this is your left and right, or your horizontal velocity, and this one's your vertical velocity. That's basically how fast it's currently moving. Now, the way this thing actually works, it calculates a score based on how they're doing. So the way the score is calculated, basically, if they're moving towards the cursor, they get an increase in score. If they're moving away from the cursor, they get a decrease in score. Okay, now they're not really doing much. What I've actually added is you can press left click and it'll actually restart the simulation. So if the simulation isn't working very well, you can just go ahead and press left click. So the goal of today's episode is to try and figure out the best way to train these guys. I don't know if it's possible to train these guys. As you can see, they all do their kind of own thing. Now, the way we train these, there's a whole bunch of ways actually. It's a matter of figuring out what the best one is. So I was having a few ideas of how to actually go about training these guys. I could just leave the cursor exactly where it is and then just click every so often and see how they go. So the ones who actually get the closest, the fastest, they're going to basically get the highest points. Then we click and it just restarts the simulation. And the other ideas I was having, what happens if maybe I move the cursor all around the screen and then the ones who actually start to sort of track it, maybe they're going to get picked. I don't know. I don't know what the best answer is. So we're going to smash through some ideas here and we'll see what works best. And guys, if you have an idea of how to train them, go ahead and click the link in the video description. Give it a shot. See if you can train these guys. If you can figure out an awesome way to train these guys really fast, I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below and let us know. So, let's smash through some training. We're going to go through a whole bunch of generations here. I'm just going to leave the cursor exactly where it is. And then, as these guys get close, if they're sitting, if they actually solve the problem, that's pretty awesome. But if they start to get too far away like they are now, or they're just sitting in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and left click and I'm going to restart the simulation. Let's just go through a whole bunch of generations like that and see how it goes. Okay guys, so we're about 25 generations of this now, and I'm not sure if we're seeing any patterns. So after this training session, let's go ahead and start moving our cursor and see what these guys do. So I've just moved my cursor and look at that, the entire generation has actually figured out, well not the entire generation, but a large chunk of them, they've all figured out to go up and down. So they have actually kind of mirrored my Y position. That's pretty awesome. So look at that, they, okay, the gravity is a bit crazy there, but they are actually kind of mirroring me. Now if we just go to the left here, Let's see, are any of them following me? Not really, but... Oh, this guy, look at this guy down here. He's actually coming towards me. A little bit, he's coming a little bit towards me. All right, let's go ahead and click. Just keep trying this. Let's just slowly move the cursor around and see what happens. So I am seeing a tiny bit of pattern following. Whoa! The gravity is insane. Holy Jesus. They go up and down really, really fast. 
Are any of these making progress towards me? That's the question. So we can see some of them. Move them around. Anyone? Any, is anyone moving towards me? Please? Someone? Please? Anyone? You? I mean, this guy's not terrible. He's, he's following me up and down. Look at this. If I can move my cursor up here. Yes, he's coming up towards me. That's cool. He's coming towards me. Oh, no. Too far. Too far. Too far. Okay, this guy's coming back down. Look at this guy on the left. This guy on the left's coming back. How? Where did he come from? I don't even know where he came from, to be honest. That's pretty cool. <laughs> this is cool. So they're, they're kind of following me up and down, but they're not quite perfect yet. Let's just go ahead and restart the simulation. This is kind of interesting. Alright. I think we might make some interesting changes to this AI. So let's go ahead and jump into the code. Alright guys, here we are in the code. Now this section of code here, basically this says, hey, if they go out of bounds, they're going to lose a lot of points. Going out of bounds is very, very bad. And it actually goes ahead and kills them as well. Now if we come down just a little bit, we can see exactly how the score is being calculated here. Basically, this is the big check here. If they're moving towards the actual cursor, then we're going to add some score. The score is basically 2, take away the distance. So the further away they are, they're going to get a little bit less score. And the closer they are, they're going to get a lot more score. Now I was thinking there was a problem here. Basically, if they're moving away from it, they're moving away from the cursor that is, then they're going to lose some score. But it's not going to be that much score. So I was thinking maybe we should penalize moving away a hell of a lot more. So the way we're going to do that, let's just go times 10. Now if they start to move away, they're going to be losing a lot of score. So that basically means they can't keep moving a little bit closer and a little bit further away. They need to always be moving towards it if they want a lot of score. I don't know if times 10 is going to be the best value here. Maybe we should go a bit... Let's just go crazy. Let's just go times 100 and see how that goes. So we've just updated this score calculating function. The whole entire success of the AI basically comes down to this. If we can tell it the right amount of score, if we can give it the right scoring system, the entire AI depends on this. Let's go ahead and jump back to the AI, and we're going to try a different training situation and see how that goes. Alright, here we are back in the target tracking simulation. Let's set this up to 1000 again. Go begin simulation. Alright, this time, I think I'm going to go for a circular approach. I'm going to do circles all the way around it and see how it goes. Now what you're actually seeing here is some automatic AI interesting stuff. So what I mean by that, specifically, see how it keeps restarting before all of them actually die? We have this interesting piece of code in there which basically says, if their score gets too low, then consider them a complete failure and just restart, basically. It's only going to restart if they all fail, which is the interesting part. So it seems like a lot of them are failing, so maybe negative 100 was a little bit on the harsh side. Oh no, look at this. It's starting to survive a little bit longer. Maybe I need to spin a little bit slower. Okay, and I don't know if this is the best way to train them. This is the whole interesting part. Is this the best way to train them? I really don't know. So their score goes down pretty fast. I'm thinking that maybe we're a little bit on the aggressive side. Okay, let's go ahead and just pause the simulation. Let's jump back into the code. We're going to change it down a little bit and then try it again. Alright guys, we just modified the code just then. So now instead of being times 100, it's going to be times 10. There we go, so it's much less aggressive. We're still going to see the same things, but it's going to take 10 times as long to actually lose. Here we go. So much less aggressive, they have a lot more time to kind of figure things out. Let's just keep doing the circles and see how this goes. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this a little bit and see if this actually was able to train them. Alright guys, so I've just spotted something very, very interesting. You can see there's this lone guy back here, just to my right here. This guy here has actually figured out how to track me horizontally, as you can see. So he'll actually go, he'll go a little bit past you, oh no, 
No, no, no, no, no! Oh, no. It looked like he was working. You saw that, surely. He was going back and forth for ages. He was actually looking like he was actually tracking me. That is so annoying. It looked like it was actually working. All right. So we're about 37 generations in now. We had one guy who looked like he was half working. So he was able to track me in one direction. That's pretty awesome. But unfortunately, he only worked in one direction. So I'm having a feeling that either we're training these guys incorrect, or maybe the scoring system is no good. So let's go ahead and make some changes to all this. See if we can make it a bit more efficient. Let's go ahead and jump back to the code. All right, guys, here we are back in the code. And this entire block here is basically the inputs of the brain. This color here basically means it's common to doubt doesn't do anything. So currently these are our four inputs, as you can see. So we had the velocity and the difference in the X position and Y position. I think we should go ahead and change this and simplify it a lot. We're gonna get rid of the velocity altogether. Perhaps it doesn't care about the velocity. It doesn't seem to really do much. It just seems to confuse it. And then let's make this a hell of a lot simpler. What we're gonna do, let's just literally make it negative one, one or zero for all of these inputs. So let's go ahead and basically normalize these to be one of those. So we're going to go var x nice is equal to zero. Then we're going to go if x diff is less than zero, then our x nice is going to be equal to negative one. If it's if x diff is greater than zero, then our x diff is going to be one. Literally as simple as that. Go ahead and copy that. Go ahead and paste that. And we're going to do the exact same thing, but in the y direction. So now. It's going to be rounded and made a lot simpler for it. Go ahead and comment out these complicated ones. Awesome. We'll just put our really simple ones in there. Awesome. There's our inputs. Much simpler. Now we actually have to tell the entire system that the number of inputs has changed. So we're going to change it to be two inputs now. Make it a hell of a lot simpler. Now, while we're here, let's just have a look what we actually have in terms of options. We have the population size. That's the number of actual AIs to actually spawn. So in this case, it's controlled by the player. So you select in that input box how many you want. Up next, we have the elitism. So the elitism is the number of AIs to actually copy from the previous round. So in this case, we're literally copying 20%. So 20%, the top 20% the top performers are actually gonna be directly copied. Next is the mutation rate. This is the percentage chance of these actually getting mutated. So you have a 30% chance of each one of the ones that gets copied to actually be mutated. And then the mutation amount, want it to be about 30, which is basically how crazy the mutations are going to be. It's the easiest way to think of it. Awesome. So we've made our changes. We've basically greatly simplified the inputs. Let's have a look and see if this actually works out pretty well. I don't know if it's gonna. Let's just see what happens. Let's just jump back into the game, guys. All right, here we are back in the game. Let's go ahead and begin our simulation. Now, if you look at the top there, we have our inputs, which is a hell of a lot simpler. So our two really simple inputs there negative one, one or zero, depending on how it's going. Let's just go ahead and smash through some generations. We'll see if it's able to learn much quicker. Interesting. So by greatly simplifying the inputs, you can already see some of them are actually starting to track onto me. So there's definitely some correlation here between simplifying the inputs and getting actual reliable outputs. That's interesting. So you can already see there's some pattern matching happening here. That's pretty awesome. All right, let's smash through some generations and see how good these guys get. I'm going to try some different patterns and see what works best to train them. All right, let's just go ahead and slow down a little bit. We have an interesting example here, which is this guy here. So he has actually solved the entire tracking in terms of up and down. As you can see, I can move my cursor up and down. And this guy here, this one right I'm touching now, he's actually solved it. But as long as I don't go too far, okay. I let him get too far and his velocity went crazy. But he actually did solve it. That's kind of interesting. We've already got another one that's solved for the Y. I have one which solved for X and one which solved for Y. That's pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and continue and see if we can find a bot that actually solves them both.
I think we might actually have a working solution. Granted, it's a really slow working solution, but it looks like an actual working solution. If you see the guy to my... I'm scared to move my cursor here, by the way. But the guy, he's coming right me right now. This guy. I think this guy is actually tracking me. Let's go really slow. Oh, no. Damn it. It looked like he was working, though. So it looked like we had a working solution. However, the trouble was that the scoring system basically said he was doing no good. In fact, it looks like we've got a whole bunch of working solutions now. Let's just come up this way. Because that's the thing. It actually... Yeah, we go. I think it's done it. I think it's done it. Has it done it? Oh, man. That's awesome. It looks like I've got a solution. So if I move my cursor around, these guys should follow me. Oh man, this is awesome. I think it actually worked. 43 generations. They're actually tracking me. Give or take. That's awesome. See, there's a whole bunch of them that are actually following my cursor around. And if I move too violently, they are going to probably crash off the screen due to gravity being crazy. But check this guy out. He's literally following me around. He trained himself to follow me. Wow, that is awesome. So, okay, he's, died. he's okay. I think he died now, but that, that's cool. He taught himself how to follow me. It wasn't 100% successful, but he's, they're getting there. They're actually learning. These guys are learning how to follow the cursor. That is really cool. So as you can see, most of them complete failures. That's okay. We just see one successful guy, and we're pretty much there. That's cool. So we actually had a whole bunch of successes. I quite like that. All right, guys. Now, the challenge for you. It took me about 43 generations to get somewhere that's kind of decent. It wasn't the best solution, obviously, but it was all right. So, challenge for you. See if you can actually train these guys and get a much better working solution than me. If you can actually figure out a better way to train these guys, I would love to know about it. Leave a comment down below. So give it a shot. Try and train these guys. See if you can come up with a really good training solution on how to actually train these guys really well. As you can see, I've trained this one. He goes up and down perfectly. There's no problem. The only thing he has to learn is left and right. So as you can see, perfect up and down, but failure left and right. So if you guys can figure out a really good training solution and how to actually do this correctly, I would love to know. Leave a comment down below. Now, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. We are going to wrap the episode up there because we kind of got a working solution. And yeah, I enjoyed this. This was cool, especially when it actually worked. And if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to smash that like button. If you guys want to see more videos from us in the future, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next episode.